We're proving that place. Swing through that place. Throw your way around. Father, we pray. We expect for the command, for the dust, the wedding presence of the Lord. Let it be revealed. Let it be seen. Let it be tangible. We pray. Even now, God, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth.
yeah, yeah, just a few more seconds of that. He's welcomed in the room. Stir up your praise. He's welcomed in the room. I know it's Father's Day, but the Father of all fathers is in the room. Can we just acknowledge his presence? You're welcomed in the room. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Now come up with a smile on your face if you haven't. Go ahead and greet somebody. Good morning. God bless you. Welcome to Cutting Edge Global. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go ahead. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers joining us online and in the house. We welcome you to our service, to our worship experience. Thank you, Jesus. And to everybody else in the room, you are still welcome. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Amen. I feel like we are all here. We are ready to go higher in worship. Can we just get a wave offering in the room this morning? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Let's go higher. Hallelujah. this one you can feel free to join in this freedom come on and clap your hands right here we give you glory to I was buried beneath my shame and who could carry that kind of weight it was my tomb till I met you. Come on and bounce right here. I was breathing, but not alive. And all my failures I tried to hide. It was my till I met you. Come on and say right here. You called my name. Say, say you call my name. Hey, God, ran. Yeah, out of the darkness. Your freedom is all I know. It's all I know. The old man knew. Say Jesus when I. Oh, that's good. We're going to sing it again. Now your mercy has saved my soul. Thank you, Lord, and now your freedom is all I know. It's all I know. The old man knew. The old man Jesus, when I met you. Come on and say, say you called my name. Then what did you do? Let's go. Out of the darkness. Into your glorious self. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for calling my name. My sin was heavy, chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter, I was an orphan, but you called me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing, now your love is the air that I'm breathing. I have the future, my eyes are open, cause when you call my name, Thank you, Lord, for calling my name. 
Prince right here. Thank you for calling us, God. Come on and clap your hands. Come on and clap your hands. Come on and clap. We thank you for freedom, Lord. So I know you next one. Come on and say, hey, hey. I am free. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm free. She no longer bound. There no more chains no holding me. And my soul. And it's just a blessing. Say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm free. Come on and clap your hands. How do I feel good in this room? We're going to do it one more time. Hey, say, I am free. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm free. Say, no longer bound. Hey, there's no more chains holding me. In my soul. And it's just a blessing. Say, praise the Lord.
of the services as we worship the Lord here at Cutting Edge Global. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, CE Worship, for that. Hallelujah. To experience God's freedom. Hallelujah. And to be in a place where there are many like-minded people. Hallelujah. Who don't feel bound. Who don't contemplate. Can I? Can I? And don't have a vocabulary of a master. Can I? Master, can I? But the Lord is here and he's open and his table is completely spread. Hallelujah. And when you're in the place of people that have that same mindset and you begin to lift your hand to the one and only Father, hallelujah, freedom takes place. And it, and it makes you feel lighter. It actually takes your mind, you guys, off of your situations. Hallelujah. And it gives you, even within these two hours, hallelujah, we thank God for the worship that comes to, together as we come together in the house of the Lord. Amen. I know you greeted everybody here in the house on today, but I want you just to do this for me. I know we do crazy things sometimes, but it's a crazy thing that really makes God really say, that's my kids. 
But I don't want you guys to do blow a kiss to God really quick in his presence. I know as Father's Day said we should do manly things, but guess what, you guys? The way that God has been, hallelujah, the way that he's truly been for his children, it is Father's Day, and we have a father that we all can share in. Every daddy loves a kiss. Every daddy appreciates a hug, hallelujah. Every father appreciates the gratitude of his children, and we owe him that. This is such a time and a place for all of you who are here with us in-house. Let's give it up for yourselves. If you are in-house, come on and clap your hands for yourselves. Hallelujah. And to those of you that are out there on social media and internet and you're seeing us live, you're seeing us on the replay, on the count of three, I want y'all to give a bigger hand for those who are out there in our global land, cutting edge global. One, two, three, come on and clap your hands. Hallelujah. We are a ministry that is connecting all over the land, not just here in this building in the city of Bellwood, but all over. We're captivating minds. We are transforming lives and changing directions all through the ministry here at Cutting Edge Global. Amen. I'm going to take this time to excuse me, take time in our worship, in our giving at this time. I'm going to ask for those of our uh, greeters and our ushers to assist us. To those of you guys who are here in the house and those of you guys that are there in the internet world watching us, this is an opportunity that we have here at Cutting Edge Global where we show generosity, where we're giving of our obedience and tithing, where we just think, you know what, God, you have been so bomb. I mean, this week, last week, and I already know that's going to happen for this week. So I want to offer something to you. It's called offering. I was beginning to teach my children just a small lesson because they have been uh, just over blessed by their graduating and many people, even to those of you out here, have been blessing my children financially. And I just took that parent time to talk to them about giving. And I began to share with them that our giving, you guys, comes from our heart because you have been blessed with so much. Blessings are not here for us to hold and to have, but blessings are to make opportunities and ways for someone else. So I begin to say, don't forget, you know, don't forget God in this process and show that generosity. Here at Cutting Edge Global, we do that. God has been tremendously beautiful to all of us. We're just a little bit over a year old, and God has been showing himself mightily in all that we have seen. And it's because people have been raised right. When you have been done something good to you, you turn around and you say what? Thank you. When you give generously, you are telling God, thank you. When you give to him and when you give within the ministry, it is making provisions for somebody else, for that single mom, for that single dad, for that kid going to college, for those who can't get to the house, we bring the house to them in their house or on their job or driving their car because they had to make or, or work an extra shift at work. We're making these things available because of your open hands. So I want you guys at this time, we have several ways of giving. If you want to give here in person, we do accept cash and check. And we just ask you to please uh, receive an envelope from any one of our greeters. And then those of you guys who are giving online, our ways of giving, they are posted there. You can see them immediately through our Zelle and PayPal. It is info at wearecuttingedgeglobal.org. If you're giving by ways of cash app, it is dollar sign, cutting edge global, made very simple. And then for all of you guys who just know and you just dedicated to this ministry, we, there's the easiest way to give it. It's through our app, you guys. You can go ahead and download cutting edge app and right there, there is a gift button that will follow you guys through that process. No matter what way you are giving, it's accepted here in the house of God and God sees it. We don't just give to get, but I tell you this, when you give, you've got to know, you've got to testify that something happens. Something happens mightier and greater. Hallelujah. While you guys are giving, we want to go ahead and bless this house in prayer, and then we're going to continue further in our worship. Our God in heaven, we take this time, not just to pass bills and envelopes. This is not a formality. We mean this. This is a seed, Lord Jesus, that we're giving to you. God, it comes from our heart, and our hearts are made glad. Whether we're giving from our last, whether we're giving from the top, God, our minds are set and ready, prepared just to give. 
because we're like the ones, oh God, that you began to heal in the word of God. And they turned around and said, thank you. God, thank you makes room for us, room for, for expansion, room for provision, not for just our household, but many households. This is the great gospel that we will carry and not hold back. But we will release, Lord Jesus, until everyone hears the word of the Lord, that you are Savior and that you are appreciated. And that Father's Day for our Father, our only Father, is every day. As we lift our hands in worship and giving, as we open up our hearts, oh God, and not clench our fist, Holy Spirit, you have your way. Set the amount to our minds, oh God, what we have to give. It's not always the amount, but it's just the obedience to that one who is contemplating, should I or should I not? Should I add a zero or subtract a zero? God, deal with them and touch their hearts. It is rather to be obedient than to sacrifice. But we bring you a sacrifice of praise through our giving. And we honor you, Father. Daddy God, Abba Father, Elohim, Jehovah, which provides every day. We love you and we lift up your name, God. We glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for your giving.
My heart is broken. You still deserve it. Even though life is crazy, Lord, I worship you Jesus oh Samania
Come on, stand on your feet and worship the Lord. Wave your hands to the Father. Give him a wave offering. Come on, this is a house of prayer. I will always worship you, Jesus. I will always give you my best. I will always, I will always, I will always, I will always. Come on. Always, I will always. Oh, Shaman. Oh, Rama Selebe Shataya. Koma Sadalama Shetelebo So Ramadia Talaya. This is Father's Day, right? Let me see what you can give the Father. Come on, give him, give him, give him what you have. Give him your worship. Give him your prayer. Give him your praise. Give him your worship. Give it to him. That part, that part. That's what he desires. That's what we're here for. Give it to him. Come on. Give it to your father. Come on, Abba Father. Give it to your father. I will always worship you, Father, in spirit and in truth. I will always worship you, God. I will always worship you, God. I will always worship you, God. I'm not putting a contingency on it. I'm not putting a condition on it. Good times, bad times. I will always worship you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we worship you and give you praise here. We give you praise here. We give you praise here. Pastor Brenda brought us to the altar last week, and she told us, give God a praise because it is the praises of the righteous that availeth much, the prayers of the righteous that availeth much, the worship of the righteous that availeth much, the effectual fervent. And some of us came up here and we forgot how to praise. We forgot how to thank him. We, we forgot what that looked like. We, we, you know, so today we're gonna try it again. We're gonna give him a good praise and a good worship. Because he is our daddy God. He is our father. I know some of you may not have had a father in the home. That's okay. That doesn't change who he is and what he has done and what he is going to continue to do for you. He is Abba. He is Father God. And if you would just take a moment to think back on how he has been father for you. There would be a different praise in this house. Remember now, I, I see it, I hear it. There's an expectation now of the Father. There's an expectation set for the Father. When Daddy comes home, there's an expectation set for the Father. Woo! I remember me and my sister as a little kid. 
when we heard the garage door go up and we knew that our father was coming in, there was an expectation that was set. We already knew with his work boots, boots on, he was going to come to the door and have us to get on our knees and untie anybody else did that, untie his boots, take his boots off, usher him to the couch. Typically, we would go into the refrigerator and get the food that he didn't finish the night before, warm it up while mama was still cooking the food that she was going to make for that day. There was an expectation in the house when the father came. There was one where we served him, but then there was one when he began to serve us. And we couldn't wait for our father to come in the house. Anybody glad that the father is in the house tonight? He's here to take care. He's here to take care of you. He's here to take care of you. And I'm so excited to have this father in this house come before you. I'm excited to have our own Pillar Sean Irvin to come. Hallelujah, come on, clap your hands, everybody. He is a real father, and we're excited above all before he stands on this platform and preaches the unadulterated word of God. I want you to prepare your hearts and your minds. I really want you to set an expectation for what a, because when, when a father says something, it, it, it's concrete. It's concrete. When a father, so when a, when a father, and I understand, so when a father disappoints you, you know, when they say they're going to come through for you and they don't, when they say they're going to, I understand the hurt and the pain that comes from a father not showing up. But how many of y'all know that our Father God is not guilty of non-support? He is not guilty of leaving us. He's not guilty of abandoning us. He's not guilty of providing for us financially, emotionally. Uh, listen, y'all, listen, because it makes a difference spiritually. And so I want you, maybe you couldn't put that expectation on your father. Or maybe you can't because he's deceased now. But I'm telling you that the father that we share, the one that we got right now, Every burden, every problem, every question, every concern concerns him. And right now, he's available. You ever been in the presence of somebody and you wanted to ask all these questions? You wanted to say all these things, but when you got there, you were, you were so dumbfounded. You couldn't put your words together. You couldn't ask him what you needed. You couldn't ask him what you wanted. You didn't know how to articulate your sentences. Let me tell you something. There is a supernatural ability with this father to find you right where you are. I'm telling you, open up right now because even if you don't have the articulation, the Bible declares that he understands your moanings and your groanings. And so maybe you don't have words. Maybe you can't say Happy Father's Day. But somebody can just rear back and say, Oh! And he understands your cry. He understands what you need. This is the kind of father that you're about to stand in front of. Not the one that condemns you. Not the one that confuses you. Not the one that conflicts with you. But the one that knows everything that you need. The one that died on the cross for your sins. The one that gave you when you didn't even think you deserved it. Or you were designed for it. This is the father that's about to step in the room. And anytime y'all know when daddy steps in the room, if it, there's a shift in the atmosphere. I want you to, but you got to prepare your belly for this transmission today. Somebody turned to your neighbor and said, there's a power transmission. There's a power transfer that's about to happen today. 
Point your hands towards Pillar Shop. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost working in him, working through him, and working for him right now. We thank you that through this, Father, you will even through a, a spiritually surrogate, you will give us everything that you have for us. And God, we know that that is exceeding abundantly above everything we can ever ask or even think according to the power that works in us. So God, somebody screaming with me, work in him and work in me. In Jesus' name, come on and clap your hands for Pillar Shine. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And I will not be silent. Sing. we serve a good, good Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, stand up in your servant today. You be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Welcome again to everyone. Hallelujah. We give God glory. We give God honor. We give God praise to everyone in the house, to everyone who's watching us online. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. We honor the Lord this morning, this afternoon, wherever you are. It's still the Lord's day. And we say happy Father's Day to all of the fathers all around. Can we give one more hand to all the fathers? Hallelujah. I give honor to uh, our great apostle, Dr. Galena. Hallelujah. To Bishop Pam. Hallelujah. And to the ones that made me a father, my wonderful wife, Dr. T., Dr. T. <laughs> yeah, and my wonderful sons, Tyree, who's here with us, and Micah and Zion, we love you. I love you. I love you. So today is Father's Day, and when Apostle asked us, she asked me to deliver the message today. I asked myself, and I noticed I said I, I inquired of myself, not the Lord. I inquired of myself. I said, self. Is there a way that I can incorporate Star Wars into Father's Day and church and it still be relevant? And I answered myself. I said, well, you know what? More than Star Wars is about spaceships and lightsabers, it's actually about a whole galaxy being redeemed by the sun. Huh? But today's not a Star Wars day. It's not a Star Wars day. Not today, maybe someday, but not today. So, so here at Cutting Edge, we've been, this year is all about submit to subdue. And we've been in this great series called the Power Series. Somebody say power. Has anybody been enjoying this series as much as I have? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So today we want to continue in this series. And, and I want to start with a, a passage of Scripture very familiar as we get started. It's Acts chapter 1. I want to begin at verse 4. It reads this way. It says, And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, Ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. When they, before, when they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? 
And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be my witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Now, the first part of verse 8 will be our focus today where it says, but you shall receive power. Somebody say receive power. Now, if you're receiving something, that means that someone has to give something from them to you. So today we want to deal with the topic power transfer. Power transfer. The Lord actually, he hit me with this message as I was uh, coming back from dropping our two sons in South Carolina. It's funny how the Lord speaks to you when you're at high elevations. Uh, and it's just so appropriate because as fathers, we have a responsibility to transfer something to those who are coming after us. It's our responsibility. Now, this also applies to, to spiritual fathers, to, to mentors and the like, to mothers, to everyone. But if I am a physical father, to someone, I should make it my priority to die empty, which means I need to pour out everything that I'm supposed to into the next generation. Now, the concept of power transfer is not just exclusive to the church with our mantles and, and our giftings and our anointings. It's not just exclusive to the church. Corporations, they typically have a manner of succession. They have succession plans for a, a CEO when they retire or when they're moving on to the next company. Uh, even in politics, in government, when you have an election, there is a procedure for a transfer of power from one president, one senator, whoever, to the next. Even in the great, wonderful Marvel Cinematic Universe, they understand the importance and the profitability of a power transfer. Captain America has passed on his shield. Hawkeye, has, he has a protege who's shooting the arrows. Thor has adopted a little girl, and she's running. I don't know why you want to give a little girl a big old hammer, but there's a power transfer. So the, they even understand uh, the Avengers understood that there has to be a power shift from them to the next so that the good fight can continue. See, Marvel and Star Wars preaches if you let it. <laughs> now, I, I want to give a couple of definitions here. The first is of the word power. And the word power is the ability to do something or act in a particular way. It's also known as the capacity or ability to direct or influence the behavior of others or the course of events. Now, in the scripture we just read, power is dunamis. It's dynamite. It's, it's, uh, it's a force. It's miraculous power. It's, it's ability. It's abundance. Uh, power can come in multiple forms. It can come in wealth. It can come in knowledge. It can come in influence. All of those wonderful things. And, and power is something that some people will do anything to get. My wife and I, we watched the, the, the Game of Thrones spinoff, uh, House of the Dragon. And it blew my mind what those people would do, who they would sleep with, who they would align themselves with, who they would kill just to maintain or to gain power. But guess what? Right here in 2023... Even in the church, we'll do the same things. There's no telling who we'll sleep with. There's, who, there's no telling who we'll kill with our tongues because life and death is in the power of the tongue. There's no telling who we will align ourselves with just to go viral, just to get a microphone in our hand, just to get a title, just to have some power. Tell somebody, ain't nothing changed. Nothing changed. That, that's power. Now, now, what is transfer? Transfer is very simple. It's the movement of one thing to another. So power transfer, then, if you put them together, is the movement of energy from its place of generation to a location where it's applied for useful work. So why is power transfer so important, then? For one thing, it helps us to avoid overload. 
Exodus 18, it tells us the story of when Jethro came to visit his son-in-law Moses. And he watched Moses sit there and saw the people coming day after day, hour after hour, minute after minute, bringing their problems to Moses. And Jethro said, what are you doing? This is too much for you. It's too much for one person to handle. Has anybody in here ever felt overloaded? Hmm? Well, I, I, I hate to break it to us, but a lot of times we're overloaded and it's self-inflicted. This is how we as fathers do. I can't talk about anybody. This is how we as fathers sometimes think. We think to ourselves, well, I don't want to bother anybody else with it, so I'll just keep doing it myself. Or, or we have this mentality of nobody else can do it like I do it, so let me just keep on doing it myself. Or, or this is the one, this is really the one where we say, you know, I can do it. Instead of me taking the time to show you, I can get it done a whole lot faster myself, so let me just do it myself. And that's what we do, and what happens is that makes us overloaded because we're taking on too much that we have to do. We're taking on too much, and it makes us stressed out. It makes us uh, anxious. It gets us cranky. It makes us tired, and that thing begins to affect our health. And all of this is happening because we don't want to give up the power that we have. And, and we're doing the next generation a disservice because we're not preparing them and enabling them to carry on what we're doing. I'm not talking about nobody but myself. Now, why else is, is power transfer important? It's because it moves the power from a place of usefulness, and it makes it an even distribution of power. Again, Moses was only one man. I'm only one man. You're only one man or one woman. Our impacts can only stretch so far. So, so why not transfer some power, some influence, so that it stretches farther? Because where there's no distribution, there's a problem. What, what's that you say, U.S. economy? The, the, the top 1% of households holds 32% of the country's wealth, where the bottom 50% of the population only controls 2% of the world's wealth. Something is wrong with that. And they hold it, and they don't distribute. They don't distribute it, and they don't do what they're supposed to. There has to be a power transfer somewhere. So, so there are three key parts to a power transfer. Yes, I got Baptist roots. Yeah, we're getting three parts in today. <laughs> there, there's three parts to a power transfer. Part one, somebody say part one. Part one is the source. In order to have a power transfer, there has to be a source. There has to be a place where power is generated. So for some of us, this is our season to be power generators. If that's you, I want you to pay attention. If that's not you, I need you to pay attention anyway, because at some point in time, you're going to be the one that has to generate the power. So if you're a power generator, if you're the one that's supposed to be generating power, I want you to remember these things. First of all, transferring power is not a death penalty. Just because you transfer some power or influence does not mean that you're done. It does not mean that you're finished. But that's what we believe. That's what we believe. That's why we've got pastors that they're carrying right out of the pulpit into coffers and hearses because they're scared that if they stop pastoring, what are they going to do? In multiple industries and, and corporations, you have, uh, there's two generations. You have the generation that's on their way out, and then you have the ones that are just starting. And there's a big gap there. You're just starting, Bishop. It's all right. <laughs> There's, there's a gap there, and what happens is those that are on their way out, they're hesitant to relinquish the power and the knowledge because they're scared they're going to take their jobs and they're not going to have anything to do. <laughs> See, that's foolishness, though. See, this is what power transfer is. Power transfer is not a death penalty. It's just making room for what God has next for you in your life. Now, if you're supposed to be transferring power, giving power away in this season, we need to make sure that we don't release it to someone who isn't ready for it. Now, you, you've heard this before. We've heard this before from Apostle. She said, it's one thing to be acquainted with power, but have you been taught and educated to properly use that power? 
A gun is, is a perfect example. Now, my son could be acquainted with a gun. He's seen it on TV and in movies. He knows that if you point it at something and pull the trigger, then the bullet's coming out. But is he educated about that gun? Does he know when you can and cannot use it? Does he understand how to clean it and take care of it and manage it and steward that gun properly? Does he understand the consequences and repercussions when you pull that trigger? Just because someone's acquainted with something does not mean that they are educated and qualified and ready to use it and for it to be transferred to them. Before you hand over power to someone, you need to have a checklist. Did God have a checklist? Absolutely God had a checklist. Look at how he chose David. How do you think he chose him? Was he courageous? He fought a lion and he fought a, he fought a bear. Check. Check that off. Is he a hard, was he a hard worker? He went out, tended the sheep in the fields as his father asked him to. Check that box. Does he have relationship with me? He played and sung unto me with nobody else around. Yes, check that. David had relationship with him. Does he take care of himself? Because guess what? We got to take care of ourselves. The Bible says in 1 Samuel 16, it says that he was, he was good looking. He was handsome. He was easy on the eyes. You can check that too. But this was the most important thing because God said to Samuel, he said, man looks on the outward appearance, but I look at the heart. So God checked his heart. And he said, that's the one. That's the one that I need you to anoint, Samuel. So again, before we transfer power, before we hand out power to someone, we need to check their heart. We need to check their education. We need to check their maturity. And we need to check their spirit. My single brothers and my sisters, when you're looking for that significant other, you need to have a checklist. You better get into relationship. You better have covenant before you give them any power. power I'm talking about power. <laughs> and, and, and then when, when we do transfer power, we have to do this. We have to manage expectations. See, it's unfair for us to expect who we transfer that power to to do the things the exact same way that we did them. Just because we transfer power doesn't mean they're going to do things the same way that we do. Imagine if, if John Osteen or, or Bishop Gary McIntosh had handed their churches over to, to Pastor Joel Osteen or to Pastor Mike Todd and said, okay, here's the church, but you have to do things the exact same way that I did them. How many people would have not been touched if that would have been the expectation? Look at David again. David transferred the power of a king to Solomon. Now, in David's power, he was about war and expansion. But then Solomon took that same power, and he was about wisdom and building up through building the temple. And it was all according to the season and the command of the Lord. Now, that's how we have to look at the power of transfer. Zion, my, my youngest son, Zion, sometimes he'll ask me, he'll say, Dad, do you think I'll, I'm going to be able to, to work hard and, and, and preach like you and, and pray like Mom? And I say, no, son, we're not expecting you to do things like we want you to do them better. And we want them to do them in the way that God leads you to do them. Now, as we're, as we're transferring power, we have to filter what we transfer. Again, this is, this is Father's Day, and as I said before, fathers, we have a responsibility to transfer things to our children. But there are some things that we do not want to transfer. Proverbs 13 and 22, it says that a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. We love that verse, right? But let's not forget it, Deuteronomy 5 and 9, God tells us that he is a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and the fourth generation. Now, we're not talking about sin. Sin is missing the mark. He didn't say transgressions in that verse. Transgression is when we have intentional disobedience. We're talking about iniquity. Iniquities are deeply rooted. These are places where, where we've continued in sin without repentance. And if we're not careful, 
those things will be passed on to our children. They'll begin to start picking up habits and doing things that we did that we never even showed them or taught them. So we have to make a decision. Am I passing down depression or am I passing down joy? Am I passing down patterns of abuse or am I passing down patterns of adoration? Am I passing down a poverty mindset or am I pa passing down strategies for prosperity? Am I passing down iniquity or am I passing down inheritance? Transfers, it's the unintentional transfers that sometimes have the most impact. So we need to declare today, say, I'm going to transfer power the right way. We're going to transfer it the right way. So part one, there is a giver. Part two, somebody say part two. For part two, there is a receiver of power. Now, if you would like to receive some power, somebody say, that's me. Now, now receiving power has requirements as well. Uh, Bishop Pam and Apostle, when they were up here for Mother's Day, they said this. They said that uh, receiving power takes a certain level of openness and vulnerability. Now, that's why it's hard for us to receive power because vulnerability and openness are not addresses that we really want to live at. <laughs> we, we want the power to get wealth, but we don't want to admit that we've been bad with money, got bad credit, and we don't know how to get out. We're not open there. We want to be empowered to have a healthy and a good relationship, but we've got too much pride to admit that we've had wifey after wifey, boo thing after boo thing, and it always hasn't been their fault when those relationships didn't work out. We want our church, we want our ministry to, to, and our business to receive the power and to be successful, but we're afraid to be vulnerable. We don't want to admit that we've never had the proper systems and structures in place. We've never been in a place of accountability before, and we're just flying by the seat of our pants. How can we, uh, how can we benefit and receive power if we're just staying closed off like that? Name me one wide receiver who can catch a football with his arms like this. It doesn't happen. Think of uh, Odell Beckham Jr. If you Google Odell Beckham Jr. right now, you're going to see this picture of him doing like this, catching the football. And if you look at him, when he does that, his arm is fully outstretched, and his body is open and vulnerable to any type of attack. He's aware of this, but he also knows that something very important is coming to him. His body is open to abuse and attack from every angle, but to him it's worth it because what's to come to him is better than what he had before. And he understands that if he can stay vulnerable long enough to get what's coming to him, it's better than any bump, it's better than any bruise that may come his way. So if we want to receive power, we've got to open up. We've got to be vulnerable. We have to have a Psalms 51 mentality like David said. He said, have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. He's being open and vulnerable before the Lord right here. He said, for I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. He said, against thee only have I sinned. How, how, can we say that? Can we really say that? I've done evil in thy sight, that you might be justified when you speak and be clear when you judge. Behold, I was shaping in iniquity. There's that iniquity. And my, in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts. And in the hidden part, thou shalt make me to know wisdom. He said, purge me with hyssop. It's going to hurt to be open sometimes. And I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. It's in this place of vulnerability that God will empower us to hear joy and gladness. He'll transfer to us a clean heart. And we receive again the joy of his salvation. If you want to be, if you want to receive that, you got to tell God, say, I'm open. It may not feel good, but I'm open. Somebody might talk about me, but I'm open. It might cost me something along the way, but what's to come for me is better than what's been. I am open. 
And only do we have to be vulnerable to receive the power, but we can't expect to receive and utilize power without relationship with the giver of the power. Ask me how I know. Ask the seven sons of Sceva. In Acts chapter 19, they attempted to use the, that power on an evil spirit. And they said, we exercise you by the Jesus that Paul preaches. That evil spirit answered them and said, Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. But who are you? And he proceeds to beat the clothes off of them, literally. Why did that happen? Because they had seen the power at work but they had no relationship with the one who gave it. Some of us, we look at Pastor Ari, we look at Prophetess Dion, and we think if we, if we stood up here and had a microphone that we could do the exact same thing that they do. No. The power works through them because they've got relationship with the giver of the power of worship. They don't just worship when they've got a microphone and they're standing up here in front of people. They don't do that. They, don't do, they worship when nobody's around. They're in the face of God when nobody's in their faces cheering them on. They've endured trials and tribulations, and they fasted, and they've wept before the Father. They study his word, and it's hidden in their hearts, and that was, that's what comes out. If nobody ever puts them on a platform again to worship, worship will still be their lifestyle because they have relationships. There's power in their sound because of their relationship. And if we want to properly receive the power and use it correctly, we have to maintain a relationship with God. Now, I told you at the beginning, we've got three parts, right? Part one was the giver. Part two was the receiver. So now we're at part three. Somebody say part three. Uh, when you're at part three, this is part three. You've got the giver, you've got the receiver, but part three is where failure happens the most. This happens, part three is at the point of transfer. It's at the point of connection. Dr. Galena told us earlier, she said, if there is no point of connection, if there's no point of transfer, then it's illegal to produce power. Don't believe me, unplug a lamp and see if you still get some light. Take batteries out of that remote control and, and see if you can still change that channel. It doesn't work that way. There's no transfer of power without a connection. Now, my, my profession is, is project controls. I manage cost and, and schedule for engineering and construction projects. And for the vast majority of my career, I was working where we were building power plants. And I began to have a, a fair understanding of how they work and why they work the way that they work. I looked up the, the, the power generating station in Joliet. It produces 1,300 megawatts of power per hour. That's 1.3 billion watts. Now, these light bulbs in here take 40 to 60 watts at the most. How do you think it would be if that power plant sent 1.3 billion watts right to your little bitty light bulb. No more light, no more house. <laughs> so, so for the power to get from the power generating station to where we are, a transmission, a transformation has to occur. The power has to be stepped down and the capacity at the home has to be stepped up for a proper handshake to occur. Are you with me? I'm almost done here. We ain't going to be here much longer. At the point of connection, there has to be a step down, humility, and a step up, boldness. That's why we have to come boldly to the throne of grace and approach the mercy seat with humility. It's at this point where perversion is disallowed and can no longer have an effect on our power. Hallelujah. Now, not only does, does wattage affect the power level, we have to be at the right point of connection, but the speed and the timing of the connection have to be right as well. See, right there. Look, I, I wanted to go there, but I said maybe everybody watched it, but I watched the finale. Woo! 
So the power from a power plant is sped up to move across the transmission lines. I know my brother Travis, he's with me. He knows what I'm talking about. But it has to be slowed down at the right point to make its way into the house. Both the giver and the receiver can be willing to make the transfer. But if the timing and the location of the transfer point aren't correct, it can lead to a lack or abuse of the power. Do I have any track and field people in here? How many know track and field? Look at you. How many of y'all think you can still do it? <laughs> that right there. <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> So, <laughs> just okay. It was it was it was like a half raise. It was they stopped by right here. <laughs> there, that's it right there. You know, you know how we do. You know how like when you hear that sound and one person take off running, and everybody else run too. So even for those who um, are not track and field people, how many are familiar with the concept of a relay race? You've seen them on TV. Praise the Lord. That's gonna save me about five minutes. I don't have to. I don't have to explain that part. So if you understand relay race, you know that you can have the four fastest people in the world. You can have the four most powerful sprinters in the world, and they will still lose that race. Where do they lose that race? In the exchange. Uh-huh. They lose it in the transfer. So, so I've got an example. Now, Tyree, come here, son. I just need, I need, I just need one of them right now. This is my oldest, who we are very proud of. This is Tyree Deshaun. Now, my Spanish people know that means of Sean. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm very, I'm very proud of him. That was one dad joke I got in. I'm very, we're very, very proud of him, Mr. College Man, and he's going to help me out. So, so remember the concept of a relay race. This is what we're transferring. Okay, step, step right there for me, son. So this is what happens now. I'm supposed to be exchanging with him. Now, if he's not ready, if he's not opened himself up and has capacity, when I come with the power, I'm just going to overtake him and run him over. And we're disqualified. Now, if he takes off before I give him the power, then he's running with no power, and he is disqualified. So this is what you have to do. There has to be communication. Come here, son. So now we're going to explain this first. So this is what I need you to do. I need you to start from a place of rest because that's the starting place. <laughs> then I need you to listen for my voice and my voice only. All right. <laughs> when I say go the first time, that's when you begin. When you hear me say stick, I want you to reach out as far as you can and be ready to receive what I'm going to give you. When you hear me say go again, you grab it and you take off with all of your might, with everything that I've given you. You got it? You got it? Mm -hmm. So notice now he had to acknowledge that he heard what I told him. The Bible says, in all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Hallelujah. All right, so now we're going to do this. So now he's at rest. Now I say go. He starts to move. Stick, reach your hand back, close it, and go. And then you take off. And when you do that, then you are ready to run with the power that I've given you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So this, now listen to what I told you now. You have to start from a place of rest. Jesus told them, he said, to wait in that place until you receive power. So what happens again, what happens is, what happens is, one thing is, if, we, if we're overtaken, it's because we didn't have the capacity. We didn't do the first thing that he told us to do. When he told us to pray, we should have been praying and getting capacity. When, we, when he told us to study, 
We should have been studying and getting capacity for that first move. But we didn't do it, so we were overtaken with the power. Then this is the next thing that happens. If you take off before you get the power, people are running before they receive what they're supposed to receive. So now they're out there preaching with no power, praying with no power, prophesying with no power, laying hands on the sick with no power. They're running without the power. The Bible says that they have a form of godliness denying the power therein. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. So we have to have a go stick, go mentality. Come in, Moses. This is what Moses and Joshua did. God and Moses looked at Joshua. They said, go, Joshua, and spy out the land. That was his first go. Joseph comes back and he says, yes, there are giants in the land, but surely we can overtake the land. God and Moses said, that's good enough for us. So here's the stick, Joshua. Now you can go and take my people over into the promised land. Thank you, Jesus. Also, then you've got Jesus. Hallelujah. He sends out the 72. He tells them in Luke, the 10th chapter, he says, Go, I send you out as lambs among wolves. Take nothing with you. Say unto them, the kingdom of God is at hand. The 72 returned unto Jesus. They said, Lord, even the devils are subject to your name. Jesus said, Here is the stick now. I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions uh, and nothing by any means shall harm you uh, now you can go again because uh, your names are written in heaven uh, jesus said in the book of acts uh, that it's not for us to know the times or the seasons but if we wait on him if we stay in a place of rest uh, if then we listen for his voice uh, if we stay in a place of unity, we shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon us. Then he said, go and be my witnesses, even in Judea. Be my witnesses, even in Jerusalem. Be my witnesses in Chicago. Be my witnesses in Los Angeles. Be my witnesses in Atlanta. In Kentucky, wherever you are, you can be my witness. Some of us have been waiting to receive the power to reach our promise. Some of you have been waiting to receive the power to reach your breakthrough. God says, go, stretch out your hand, receive the power, and get your promise, get your healing, Get your power to get your deliverance. Get your power to get your family back. Get your power to get your healing back. Somebody shout power. 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 I need you to do something for me. Yeah, stay right there. I need you to do something for me. I've got power in my hands. I need everyone to take one of these and just begin to transfer the power to somebody close to you. And as you transfer this power from one person to the next, believe that you're giving them everything that God wants to give to them. And as you're receiving the power, believe that you're receiving everything that God wants you to receive. So just begin to pass that power from person to person. Receive it, receive it, receive it. Give it, give it, give it. Whatever they need, give it, give it, give it. Whatever you need, receive it, receive it, receive it. Power to get wealth. Power to receive. Power to walk right. Power to talk right. Power 
to pray right, power to sing right, power to live right, power to act right, power to father right, power to mother right, power to talk right, power, 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 now unto him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all, according to the power that works in you. Somebody say, I receive it. Power transfer. I receive it. Power transfer. I receive it. Hey, that I'm out of Do them with power. I receive it. Power. 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 Hallelujah. Holy Ghost power. We're in one place. We all want to call Give it, give it, give it away. Give it away to your family. Give it away to your church folks. Give it away to your co-workers. Give it away to your boss. Give it away. Hallelujah. Give it, give it, give it. Give it, give it, give it. Receive it, receive it, receive it. Power. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because as you give, you make room to receive even more. As you give, you make room to receive even greater. I want to leave this last thought with you. In electrical engineering, there's a term called the maximum power transfer theorem. And what it states is that to obtain maximum external power from a power source with internal resistance, the resistance of the load has to equal the resistance of the source. So my question that I leave with you is, what is your resistance to the power transfer? Hallelujah. Why are you resisting giving or receiving the power? If you know you're in a place where you're supposed to be giving or receiving, partaking or receiving power, but there's some resistance somewhere. Maybe it's fear, doubt, or unbelief. Maybe it's pride. Maybe you're so tied up in something that you don't know how to let go of it. If you're in a place where you know there's some resistance right now, I just want you to stand. If you know you're in a place of resistance, just stand. Whatever it is, just submit it to the Father right now. Hallelujah. Whatever it is, just submit it to the Father now. Just submit it to him. I give it unto you, Lord. We come boldly before the throne of grace. And Father, we trust you that if it's in your hands, if you hand it over to us, then you trust us with it. And if you need mercy, come now with humility and receive his mercies that are new every morning. We give it all to you, Lord. We give it all to you. We give it away to you. We surrender everything over to you in this moment. We surrender ourselves. We surrender our lives. We hold nothing back from you. We will hold nothing back from you in this moment. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. I 
Say withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. Say it like you mean it. Withhold, withholding nothing. Holding nothing. Holding nothing. Holding nothing. We bless God for the man of God, our very own pillar, Pastor Sean, and that outpouring that he gave us today. Happy Father's Day to you. You have just been a part of our encounter this is where we worship and i'm sure that you are probably just as full as i am and you're probably ready to make some decisions not about me and maybe not even about cutting edge but about your relationship with jesus christ and i want to make sure that you get an opportunity to do that to accept jesus christ as your lord and savior if you've never done that before it's a simple prayer it's as simple as believing that Jesus Christ is Lord and receiving him into your heart so that he can direct your life. So pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner and I thank you for saving my soul. I thank you for dying on the cross and I thank you for raising from the dead so that I could be saved. Now, if you prayed that prayer, I told you it's just as simple as that. We're going to start the process so that the Lord Jesus can literally walk with you and that he can begin to feed you. We're here on Wednesdays at 6 in the morning, Central Standard Time, as well as 6.30 p.m. Wednesday night, Central Standard Time. And we are going through and walking through the word of the Lord. We are also here as an online church and an in-person church right here in the city of Chicago or the Chicagoland area. We want to invite you to be a part of Cutting Edge Global Family. You've done the first thing. You've encountered us. Now you can download our app and on our app there is a connect card just for you where if you share a little bit of your information we'll be able to share with you the next steps so that you can increase in your relationship with Jesus Christ with the help of all of us here at Cutting Edge. I'm here, the lead pastor, Dr. Galena, but we have plenty of pillars and pastors that are waiting to help you along in this journey. You are not by yourself. The Holy Spirit is already causing you to hear and heal. And I want you to know that God is on your side. You are an overcomer, whether you know it or not, by the blood of the lamb and the words of your testimony. Can I just pray a closing prayer with you? Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for all those that heard, but you said to not just be a hearer of the word, but a doer also. I pray God that you will strengthen their heart to do the thing that they found in their heart, not in condemnation, but in conviction of their soul. Maybe they have been out of fellowship with you or out of fellowship with the body of Christ. And this is an awesome opportunity for them to get connected again. I pray, Father, even as they go through the, the connect card, that they will connect to the spirit of truth, that they will connect to the spirit of love, that they will connect to you. And God, be empowered to move according to your plan and your way. For you said, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, thoughts of good and not of evil, to give them an expected end. And we thank God that they are overcomers. And we thank God that this is the way that they will get into a closer relationship with you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. For it is so, and so it is. Amen. <laughs>